Welcome in. It's hump day already. (laughs) Doesn't seem like it because in the U.S. we had that holiday in the middle of it. So, yeah, we're already to the middle of the week. Thomas Miller, thanks for joining us on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Glad you could stop by. We're looking at a sky today that is pretty much like the sky yesterday, except one key thing. And that is that the aspect between Saturn and Mars, the big opposition that hit over the weekend, is starting to thin out a little bit. It will be basically neutralized in the next four days on the 10th, and then by the 11th, we'll be off of our slate. So as it fades, things are getting happier. We also have a Gemini moon that will be conjuncting Mercury, which is in Gemini. So there's going to be some happiness there around communication as well except for what we mentioned yesterday, is that square to Neptune. So that frames it up on two sides of the coin. And we covered all of that yesterday, so I'm not going to repeat it. If you missed that, just catch yesterday's episode. But I'm looking at the keywords, and we have a just a dominant number one keyword today, power. Now, remember yesterday I was looking at the midpoints, and Pluto has a seat at the table here. So we have several energies coming together. We have the Saturn-Mars opposition. That's square to Uranus. So let's just put all these together. We're building a melting pot here. Venus is applying to or moving in or closing in on Mars, whichever terminology you want to use. And then Pluto also is in midpoint astrology at the table. Let's just put it that way. It's at the table. So we have a lot of dynamic here around not only the strange and unusual that we've been talking about, but also this Mars, now Venus. Let's bring money, love, beauty, harmony, joy, aesthetics, art, entertainment, your artistic side. And then with Pluto in there, and of course both Saturn and Pluto are in retrograde, that this is bringing, the the, the power element of this is bringing this super focus inside. It's about us doing this inner work. And also we had that, uh, what was it? Oh, Venus was trying Chiron as well. So the signature of this is really strong, that if you've been doing spiritual work over this past week, Keep on keeping on because that's the energy and the tailwind behind you. You know, if you've been feeling more desire to do more spiritual digging, that's part of this as well. I know I have. It's a switch that I haven't been able to turn off like for a week. And it's like it's an unquenchable thirst right now. Well, that's what's going on up in the sky. Now, I'm almost through all of the listener questions. So if you guys have something, preferably not about your own chart, but uh, if it's applicable and we can make something from it, sure, go ahead. But if you have an astrology question, shoot it on the speak pipe up there at the top of the funastrology.com website. But in light of the fact that Venus is just about to conjoin Mars. Hello, Thomas. My question is about Sun conjunct Mercury in relationships and in the natal chart. I have Sun conjunct Mercury in my natal chart. So that means if I date anyone within a year of me, I have that same aspect in this industry. Could you tell us about this? Thank you. You bet. And thank you for listening. And that is a chart specific question, but it's something that we can really glean some common areas from. So let's talk about those first. And that is synastry. So relationship charts, which is about the area of the weakest that I I could dive into just about anything. And the one that I haven't dived into that much is relationships. But I have done quite a bit of looking at combined charts and, of course, the synastry charts that she is talking about, where you take two and basically blend them into one. Now, I would imagine just understanding astrology and believing in it the way that I do that somebody who was hyper-vigilant and hyper-proficient at relationship astrology could probably tell you exactly what kind of relationship you were going to have with another person. Here is where I would shy away from it just a little bit. It's that area of free will. Now, I've always said in relationships, if you are not growing together, you are growing apart. There is no just standing still. 
So yes, you can look at the various aspects in natal charts, and this is where I think you would definitely have to put the solar arc and the transits in with it as well and really do an in-depth analysis. But if you looked at just those natal placements, the big question you have to ask is, not only are you moving toward your chart, is your partner moving toward his or her chart? Because how many times in relationships does one person drift off? So the first criteria, if I were going to do a relationship reading, and I mean that would be stretching it because I tell people that's not my, that's not my bag. But if I would first ask, where are both of you on your spiritual journey? Now, remember, we can look at the shadow side on the chart. I mean, we can see I was doing some studying on horary astrology over this past uh, few, the past few days. And where you ask the chart a question and a couple of the examples in this one book that I'm studying from mentioned partners that were like one partner was already seeing somebody else. And you can see that in the chart. My jaw was on the floor. I mean, it shouldn't have surprised <laughs> You know, this stuff just continues to be amazing. I mean, literally. And, and the aspects were right there. And I came back and looked at it again, and I was like, yep, wow. And when the astrologer who was giving this example confirmed it with the client, that's exactly what was happening. So it's in there. You just have to dig it out. Now, with relationships, there's another piece of this that I've been also been studying lately, and that is harmonics, midpoints, and you ready for a new term? Uranian astrology. Don't go too far on looking that one up because it's pretty deep in the woods. In fact, all of this is so thick in the woods that I don't bring it here. Sometimes I'll slip it in just from study that I mold into the rest of the chart. But this is the stuff where your eyes start to gloss over. But in basically what you're doing is you are going in between the aspects. It's something that you really need software to do and it gets complicated quickly. But that would be another way to really go inside a relationship chart and start to understand the intricacies and details of your partner's composition and what you might be looking for. So that's going to be forthcoming. And even when we get to the point where the course comes out, which I've been telling people, I think, look for about two weeks that we're going to open the gate here and let uh, people in for a day or two for the beta program, there will be plenty of time for everybody in every, every time zone. This is not fighting over slots like we've been doing with readings. This is going to be wide open. Anybody who wants to get in will get you in. But it, it will be for a limited time because we're doing beta. It's not finished yet. You're coming in. I'll tell you all about that later. Let's go on with this. So we'll be talking about midpoints and those structures and Uranian stuff. I'm going to include that in future courses because I want to be able to present that material. All right, let's talk specifically about Sun Mercury just really quickly in Sinistry is basically how you communicate and interpret each other, if you will, around a communication paradigm. It also is reflective of how each of you thinks. Now, on one side of the coin, let's take the positive side, the sun can obviously illuminate. It can enhance. It can warm up your words. When the shadow side of the coin takes hold, then Mercury can make those words harsh or cold or detached. Now, what she's talking about here is when you put the charts together and you have a conjunction like that, it's going to show up in both of your charts. And here's the other thing. If you are dating somebody or you're in a relationship with somebody who is within a year or two of you, all of the slow-moving planets are going to be almost in the same position. They just don't move that fast. So your Pluto and Uranus and Neptune and to some degree Saturn and to a lesser degree Jupiter are going to be in pretty much the same places. It's the fast guys that are going to change. And that, to me, is yet another reason to bring in the slice and dice machine of midpoints, harmonics, and Uranian astrology to get in between these aspects. It's the same thing you would do if you had twins. If you had twins and they were four minutes apart, and yet they are two different people, there are ways that you can go in and explain that because four minutes in astrology is a long time. It can be. That's why accurate birth information is so important. Hope that helps. Great question. Thanks for sticking around if you did. And if not, we will see you back. Or wait a minute. If you didn't stick around, you won't know that we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, you will. Because we always are. Most of the time. <laughs>
Happy Hump Day.